Good morning, college. My final assembly for the term was inspired by something that myself and Mr. Fullard did last weekend. About four weeks ago, Andrew Booth, the director of Wild Series Trail Running, made us an offer we couldn't refuse. He'd give us two entries into the Kruger to Canyon two-day trail run if we'd do the same for him to come and take part in the Volkberg Trail Run in August. At the time, it sounded like a great idea. So I agreed and I asked Mr. Fullard if he wanted to take part as well. Now, put, to put this all into context, I have never run more than a half marathon in my life before. Yep, that's right, 21 kilometers. And here I was about to attempt 73 kilometers over two days. 42 Ks on Saturday, up and over Marip's Corp twice, and then another 31 kilometers the next day. The two day event would wind up being the most amazing adventure and metaphor for life for me in general. I would like to share some of the lessons I took out of being part of this amazing event with you. The first lesson, be brave. To achieve things beyond your ordinary, you have to be willing to stretch yourself. As Tony Robbins said, if you keep doing what you've always done, you'll keep getting what you've always gotten. By being brave enough to say yes to this amazing challenge, we were about to embark on a life-changing adventure. So lesson one, be brave, try new things, take yourself outside of your comfort zone. If you do this, you will be richly rewarded. So to give you a little bit of background on what we were going to do on day one, like I said, it was 43 kilometers and there was quite a lot of climbing in this. In the end, I think we'd have, we climbed around 2,500 meters of ascent altogether half of which was up to that first little uh, where the arrow is. But in the first four kilometers of this climb, we, we headed straight up this steep path, you can see, and, and at that first, the end of that first climb, we'd got to about, um, we'd probably done about 900 meters of climbing. And then plateaued a bit, and then we'd go up to the highest point before going back down all the way off the mountain, and then coming back up the other side and redoing it. So it's the same mountain, but just going down and back up again. So that was what we were going to do on day one. That little green dot at the top there is Marie's Corp Primary School where we started and we finished both days. So lesson number two. The best rewards come after hard work. Saturday started, someone's alarm clock waking us up at four o'clock despite the fact that we had all agreed that we'd wake up at 4.30. So after a quick bite of breakfast, we all headed out to the starting line and there were 150 of us who lined up at the start to take on this amazing challenge. And at 5.30, the gun went off and we were on our way. The first four kilometers literally were straight up, as you've seen. So we power hiked up the steep path that was made over decades of young children and donkeys going up between the Marie's Corp Primary School and the military base, which was stationed at the top where they used to live. The path then flattened out. And it was at this stage that we had a bit of respite from our climbing. And we had four k's of running through the most beautiful indigenous forests, which had been untouched for centuries by human hand. That break, however, was very short-lived, and it wasn't long before we once again began to climb up to the highest point on our little adventure. After another kilometre of climbing, we emerged out onto the ledge, and we had the spectacular view that you can see there out over the Blyder River Canyon. We were awestruck at the beauty that surrounded us. The lesson that I took out is a simple one. The harder we are willing to work, the more effort we are willing to expend will be the ultimate decider as to the rewards that we reap. The view that we had at about 7.30 on that morning is one that will always, I will always have in my mind's eye. Lesson number three, never ever give up. After six kilometers of descent, where we dropped straight down off the plateau, down into the Blyder River, we hit the bottom and joined up with a forestry road that then began to climb up all the way up to the forestry station that was situated at about 1,200 meters. By this stage, my knees were beginning to twinge a little. The six kilometers of steep descent, followed by the six kilometers of climbing had put a massive strain on my underprepared body. 
It was at this time that we luckily came upon the 22 kilometer aid station, which meant that we could take a bit of a breather, restock on some food and drink, and give us a chance then to sort of gather ourselves before we headed off to the next aid station, which was at the 30 kilometer mark. This 30 kilometer aid station signaled the last opportunity for us to turn back. It was also at this time that we were faced with the final daunting climb back up to the highest point. I now had a choice to make. Bite the bullet and push through or take the easy option out and jump in the 4x4 that was parked at the aid station and make the comfortable journey back off the mountain down to base camp. Obviously the decision was an easy one. Even if I had to walk all the way to the end of this race, I was going to finish the day. The next 70 kilometers that followed between the final aid station and the start of the big descent down onto the low felt took me to some very deep and dark places. By now, my knees were hurting so much that I literally had to lift up my legs with my hands to get them up and over some of the rocks and up and over some of the trees that had fallen over the track. It must have been quite a sight. I pushed on. Miraculously, at about the 37 kilometer mark, just before we began the descent back down, the pain eased a little, and I was able to kind of run, walk down the last four steep kilometers back off the mountain. Thankfully, I had made the decision to push through. The elation of crossing the line after seven hours and 47 minutes on the trail on that first day is something that will stay with me forever. That day taught me a simple lesson. We are tougher beyond our wildest dreams. We just have to believe in ourselves and obviously never ever give up. Lesson four, always do your best. What struck me by this event was the wide range of athletes who took part. The usual racing snakes were there chasing each other for line honors. But it wasn't those runners that really stuck out. There were runners of all shapes and sizes, as well as all ages, old and young, who had lined up to conquer this beast. For many, just completing the two days of racing was a personal victory. For others, it was breaking certain times that they had set themselves. For me, it was one of those. I had set myself an 11-hour target. No one questioned or queried the individual runners about their own times. This was a personal battle, which each person set and measured intrinsically. It was only them who could truly say whether they had done their best or not. Having seen the elation and the pride on people's faces when they crossed the line on Sunday, I can assure you that each and every person who ran those two days felt that they had tried their best. And in the end, what more could you ask for? Lesson five, it's always about the people. Without the people around us, celebrating our successes and helping us when the chips are down, all of our achievements and successes would be hollow and worthless. The camaraderie one feels at the end of an event like this was truly awe-inspiring. These types of events see the top runners in the country rubbing shoulders with weekend warriors and it is inspiring to see that each and every one of them is willing to share their ideas and their advice. Mr. Fullard, as you know, is pretty good at this kind of stuff. And his advice and help over the two days was unbelievable for me. I'm pretty certain his advice was the main reason I was actually able to finish these two days. His advice on how to plan my race and on how to deal with my painful legs after day one so that I could even get up an attempt day two was integral in me finishing. I'll never forget his advice on taking Rennies so that I can avoid cramp. Who would have thought? The advice from Benny Roo, the Addo 100 mile champion on what kit to take and how to eat and drink during the race also played a huge part in my successful completion of the event. Just out of interest sake, by the end of the two days, my calories that I had burnt across the 73 kilometers 
was close to 8,000 calories, which I found incredible. And then most importantly, at the end of the day, to sit and to share the war stories from out on the trail. Some of them this time included runners having to jump over three meter long mambas and some falling down 30 foot banks before having to climb up and carry on their run are things that adventures are made of and make the sharing of them and the sharing of these stories make an adventure like this all the worthwhile. And finally, not everything will always go according to plan. On day two, I got up and was very grateful that my legs felt as if I could at least start the race. Extremely tired, but I knew that I was going to get through. And I knew that I had a chance that I could get in under that 11 hours. Thankfully, it was only 29 kilometers to run and I had worked out my minutes per kilometer to get me home in under that time. And off we went. Unfortunately, at about six or seven kilometers into the race, I missed a turn. The marker had been blown into the tree and I was so busy chatting away to the guy I was running with and concentrating on putting one foot in front of the other that we just missed it. A kilometer down the road, the event photographer came herring up in his 4x4 to tell us that we had missed a turn quite some way back. Frustrating, isn't it? All my plans out of the window. Except that only 100 meters before the photographer stopped us, we had come across a rare sighting of two honey badgers in the road. Now you can imagine that was quite a sign for me. If we hadn't missed the turn, we'd never had the opportunity to see these reclusive animals firsthand and close up. What an amazing experience and worth every single meter of those two kilometers extra. So the final lesson is that at all times, things will not go according to plan. But it is often these changes in direction which bring about unexpected joys and reward. Make the most of them. And I even managed to finish in under 11 hours. So, over to you. Go out and seek your adventures. Be brave. Work hard. Never, ever, ever give up. Share your ups and downs with those close to you. And most importantly, never give up. Have a wonderful holiday.